Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. I am Dr. Gunjan Desai and today we are going to start a new series on applied anatomy. This is a very important topic for everyone who is interested in operating on hernia or understanding hernia because anatomy of this region is very tricky and it was a common query from a lot of our viewers. So we are going to discuss the anatomy and as always try to simplify it. So in this topic, we are going to understand the important concepts that have come up in the recent time and that is the anterior and the posterior aspects of anatomy or from outside and from inside because laparoscopy you see things from inside and open anatomy is different from laparoscopic anatomy. These are the concepts that we are going to understand. Then we will delve into ventral hernia, again understand the anterior and the posterior anatomy, the nomenclature or the classification of ventral hernia. Going into groin hernias, again we will look at anterior and posterior anatomy. Throughout this series, we will see how different name structures contribute to the anatomy of this area. We will also look at the inverted Y and the phi triangle concept of laparoscopic hernia anatomy. And in this series, a lot of commonly asked questions in exams as well as important points to remember while performing hernia surgery will be answered. So let us go into the very basic concepts. And these are very important concepts to understand throughout this series, these terms will be used. So understand these concepts very carefully. So when the patient is lying down at the head end and the foot end as shown here, the abdominal wall anatomy is what we are interested in. And fascia transversalis is one structure that you need to remember and the other is peritoneum. I am sure so far things are very clear. We have seen abdominal wall anatomy in our ventral hernia video as well. So, important structures that we are going to see in this series include fascia transversalis and the peritoneum. And the first term that you need to understand is the space of Bogros. Okay, This is a space between fascia transversalis and peritoneum as shown here. And this is the space that is entered during total extraperitoneal hernia repair. Right? So, now, there is controversy in literature regarding space of Bogros and space of Regius. Some people call it the preperitoneal space. It is also known as the extraperitoneal space. This space continues towards the retroperitoneum. But what is important to understand is that it is a plane between fascia transversalis and peritoneum. So, if you see the urological anatomy books, a lot of the time, space of regius is only between the pubis and the bladder. Whereas in anatomy concepts, the space of regius is extended laterally till the inferior epigastric vessels and lateral to inferior epigastric vessels is the space of Bogros, right? You can look into this into the anatomy books. For this video, it is very important to remember that fascia transversalis and peritoneum have a space in between, which is the space where most of the hernia surgeries are performed, and that is the space of Bogros. Now, when we do transabdominal preperitoneal, and we have named them in case you are new to these surgeries. So, transabdominal, that means that you are entering the peritoneum, your laparoscope is entering the peritoneum. And that is why it is known as transabdominal. Then you make a cut on the peritoneum to see the space of Bogros from inside. So that is why it is known as transabdominal preperitoneal. Okay. And the other approach is total extraperitoneal, where you are directly inserting your laparoscope into the space of Bogros. So once you know this important concept. In hernia, the anterior anatomy is the anatomy from outside and that is the anatomy that we have studied in MBBS books, basically the open inguinal hernia anatomy. However, when you want to understand laparoscopic inguinal hernia surgeries, what we are interested in knowing is the posterior anatomy and a lot of time there is a confusion in understanding the anatomy because this concept of anterior and posterior is not clear. 
So when you see abdominal wall from outside, you see the inguinal ligament. When you see from inside, you see the iliopubic tract, things like that. Okay. So it is the mirror image or it is completely opposite side of the abdominal wall that you are looking at. And this is the most important concept that you need to understand. So when we are discussing the anterior anatomy, it is from outside. When we are discussing the posterior anatomy, it is looking at the preperitoneal space from inside, which is very important in laparoscopic inguinal hernia anatomy. Area around the umbilicus is again very important to understand. And from umbilicus to the pubis is where the various structures are named. And these are the structures that you will encounter in hernia surgeries. And that is what we are going to study. Now coming to ventral hernia, this is relatively easier as compared to the groin hernia anatomy, which also we will see in upcoming parts of this series. But for ventral hernia nomenclature from anterior, right? You can see the person is outside the body. So when we are talking at seeing a hernia from outside the body that is anterior, and the European Hernia Society classification is what is useful. They have two categories, M and L. M is medial, L is lateral. The anterior axillary line is an important landmark and the lateral margin of rectus sheath is the important landmark. So lateral margin of rectus sheath separates the medial from lateral and anterior axillary line separates lateral 1, 2, 3 from lateral 4. We will see how they are labeled. So the upper and lower landmark for the medial part of ventral hernia. So medial ventral hernias are between xiphoid and the pubic bone. So above is the xiphoid and below is the pubic bone. M1 is 3 centimeters from xiphoid. M3 is 3 centimeters above and 3 centimeters below the umbilicus. And M5 is 3 centimeters above the pubic bone. Now, you to understand that these measurements refer to the epicenter or the majority of the part of the hernia. So, if the hernia is within 3 centimeters from xiphoid, it is M1. If it is within 3 centimeters from pubic bone, it is M5. Umbilicus is M3. Between M1 and M3 is M2. And between M3 and M5 is M4. So, relatively simplified version of EHS classification, the medial ventral hernias are now over. Now, when you extend the two umbilical lines laterally towards the anterior axillary line, you can get the L1, L2 and L3. The margins for these are costal margins superiorly and inguinal region inferiorly, right? So, that is what... L1, L2 and L3 is. So essentially L1 is when the hernia is above 3 centimeters above the umbilicus and L3 is below 3 centimeters below the umbilicus. Lateral to anterior axillary line, all the hernias are L4 hernia, right? So that is ventral hernia nomenclature, fairly commonly asked question and something that is been given to standardize ventral hernia classification. So you should know. To ventral hernia anatomy from posterior or within, you know intraperitoneal only. We have discussed it in our ventral hernia mesh placement video. So you can have a look at it if you have not seen it. But that is where the posterior anatomy is important. That is you are seeing the structures from inside the abdomen. So if this is the umbilical ring and the right and left side have been labeled, we know that superiorly or towards the head end is the ligamentum teres or obliterated umbilical vein which forms the falciform ligament. Now you may feel that falciform ligament is superior to umbilicus but from anatomical studies it is very clear that the most common insertion site in nearly 75% of cases or falciform ligament is the inferior margin of umbilicus. And that is why this depiction here. The red line shows the uracal ligament or the median umbilical ligament, which attaches to the urinary bladder. We all know persistent uracus can lead to urinary discharge from the umbilicus or uracal fistula. That is the importance of this median umbilical ligament. 
to the sides of it is the medial umbilical ligament which covers the obliterated umbilical artery. Understand that these are all folds of peritoneum. Medial umbilical ligament is the obliterated umbilical artery and lateral umbilical ligament is the inferior epigastric artery. So these structures are very important to remember. You can see the inferior epigastric artery till the arcuate line or the linea semicircularis, which is also known as the semicircular line of Douglas. Arcuate line basically is where the posterior rectus sheath ends. So this is the structure where inferior epigastric artery dips inside the posterior rectus sheath. Okay, And this is the area till where you can see the inferior epigastric artery from within. Okay, so lateral umbilical ligament or inferior epigastric artery. These structures also help in dividing the supraingvinal hernias and the hernias that are between median and medial umbilical ligaments are known as supravesical hernias. The hernias in the medial fossa that is between medial and lateral umbilical ligaments are direct hernias and the hernias that are lateral to inferior epigastric artery in the lateral fossa are the indirect hernias. We will correlate this in our groin anatomy video which is the second part of this series where you will see and you already know that the hernias that are lateral to inferior epigastric artery are indirect hernia that is the lateral fossa shown here hernias that are medial to inferior epigastric artery are direct hernias and hernias in between the median and the medial umbilical ligament are supravesical hernias. So this is very important, the anatomy from within, not commonly discussed but something that is very important to understand. So we have seen the concepts of anterior and posterior anatomy, these are heavy videos, so look at them two, three times to understand these concepts. We have seen the anterior and posterior anatomy of ventral hernia in this video. In the next part, we will look at the important landmarks and the anterior anatomy of groin hernias. And in upcoming parts of this series, we will cover the entire concepts of ventral as well as groin hernias with all the important name structures, named hernias, commonly asked questions. If you have any queries regarding this video or our past videos, if you have not seen, you can look at our website that is www.learnwitheducer.in. We also put recommendations of books as well as books authored by our authors. So you can look at that. Thank you. Mm -hmm.